So good morning, my name is Veronica McKillop. Who is here first time? Wow, it's probably like 40%, 50%. It's good. Well, welcome and uh, I hope you stay with us for not just today, but in the future, become part of our community because we're always delighted to have new people and, uh, you know, having new interesting conversations. So welcome to UK IPv6 Council fifth annual meeting. It's hard to believe that actually uh, next year, April, is going to be five years since the council started and actually first uh, council meeting was in September 2014. And uh, I'm, really, I'm really pleased that we keep going. There's lots of effort that the team put together to have this event. I do apologize in case I don't make sense. I'm totally jet lagged. I got here from two weeks, uh, after two weeks in the US, and I got here yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm really, I'm really pleased that I can be here. So, a quick look at the agenda. We've got an exciting change compared to the previous events. At previous events, we used to hand out surveys, and uh, then uh, we did a random draw at the end that had a couple of books to give out. But this time, we've got IPv6 bingo. The Tim and the team prepared. So, Tim's going to talk, he's going to introduce it and explain it later. Then, our keynote speaker is Jen from Google. Uh, really excited to have her. She's going to be speaking remotely, but the team has done a brilliant job uh, testing the connection and she's online ready to speak. Then we'll have uh, three ISPs giving us updates. EE, uh, Nick is going to talk about the, the change they have seen after uh, iOS 12 has been rolled out. Uh, then Virgin Media, I'm so happy that Loba is here. I'm sure he's going to do a brilliant job talking about Virgin's plans for IPv6. Uh, he shared a little, little bit with us uh, during the workshop in September and the presentation was fantastic. And then we've got a company here that not many people probably have heard of, but I've known of Liquid Telecom for many years and they are a very interesting company that do lots of work in uh, Africa and Matthew is going to talk about that. The morning is going to conclude with uh, what has now become a little bit traditional, Jim Bound IPv6 awards. And I'm really happy we've got eight companies that have been recognized this year. After lunch, uh, there's going to be a section more focused on enterprise deployments and uh, like deployments in the academic um, sphere. So we've got Tim from LinkedIn really focusing uh, on the enterprise deployment and mostly data centers, what they've done there. Then uh, hopefully Steve Ewell as well. Then there should be Duncan from Imperial College London speaking about IPv6 deployment in the research uh, area and Chris from the Queen Mary University here in London. And then uh, the second section is going to be concluded by Benedict talking about what it really makes sense to enable IPv6 first on mail and web servers. After the coffee break, uh, we will have one more remote presentation by a product manager from Microsoft Xbox, that's Darren, talking about impact of IPv4 depletion on peer-to-peer um, -peer applications, mostly from perspective of Xbox. Then we will have Terry uh, sharing his experience with implementing NAT64 and DNS64. And the final talk of the day, very interesting because we always have discussions about what are the right ways to measure IPv6 and how to report deployments. So we've got Olivier from ISOQ UK talking about IPv6 metrics and to lead the measurement discussion. And at the end, there'll be bingo prizes. So uh, uh, the bingo is there to keep everybody focused and to stay, that you stay with us the whole day. We also hope that later you will join us uh, just across the street, Pater Noster, if you've been already twice. It's a really nice venue and uh, I think people always like to continue discussions. Bit of admin, you have hopefully seen it upstairs in the coffee area. There is a wireless network available, pass for a BTCA event, and presentations will be posted on our website, hopefully before Christmas, if not then early January, you have to uh, bear with us. Now, I would like to thank very much to BT, who again for the third time provided us with this fantastic venue and they are also um, providing all the catering. 
Uh, many of you know we are just a technology user group, people are volunteers that get together. We don't have any money from anybody. So we go around and ask who can uh, provide us with venue and, and sponsorship. I also know that the IET are bringing some more prizes for the bingo later today. And I would like to thank my company, Microsoft, uh, because they've sponsored a couple of books uh, for the bingo prizes. Now let's have a quick look uh, on what's happened in the last year. And I would like to give you a brief update. Usually start with looking back, uh, reminding people what the council is about. We have a mission that we want, to, when we started and still continues today, that we want to create a platform for discussion and sharing of information about IPv6 deployments. That is really what we want to do uh, because we believe that through this uh, sharing of experience, people get more encouragement and get more confidence and also can learn from us. I also go and on behalf of um, Microsoft, my employer, I speak at different companies uh, at different conferences and uh, people come to me saying that they really love content that we put on our website. And these are people from different countries and they really enjoy all the presentations. We usually, we most very often post uh, videos, but sometimes we post only slides. Anyway, people find the information really valuable. So I just want to say that to the core team and everybody who is going to speak today, that what you're sharing with us is appreciated globally because uh, today there are not that many IPv6 forums or uh, task forces that meet on a regular basis, that publish uh, material. So it's really appreciated uh, by people outside the UK too. Over the last year, we have grown to over 600 members. I think last year in December, it was something like 550 members. So we've got a few more people in our community. Uh, the way we grow our community is basically people join our LinkedIn group. That's all. There are no fees uh, for any registration, etc. This year, we organized one roundtable discussion that was in April and Facebook very kindly hosted us. And then in September, we had a very interesting workshop that focused on IPv6 transition technologies. It's a wrong date, it should it be September 2018? Sorry about that. And uh, I want to thank uh, to David from Imperial College London, who basically organized the venue and the catering so we could have really good afternoon um, talking about the various transition technologies that are leveraged to deploy v6. And I want to give a big shout out to Pete Stevens from Mythic Beasts because thanks to him, our website is hosted on IPv6 only for free by Mythic Beasts. So, and also big thanks to Tim because he had to put in lots of his uh, personal time to actually move our website from, from the um, old hosting environment to this new one. So uh, it's really appreciated. So it's going to be five years in April, this is the fifth meeting, and I thought I'd say here a little story about how this community actually started. Because not everybody knows, and based on the hands, about 50% of you guys are here first time. So in the room here, there is Professor Peter Kirstein, uh, who together with Latif uh, Ladit from IPv6 Forum, approached me at MPLS World Congress in Paris. And they told me, well, UK is really doing nothing about IPv6 and this is totally unacceptable. And they heard of me uh, working with various customers. At the time I worked in Cisco as a systems engineer and I had lots of workshops and uh, discussions about IPv6 deployments. So I think somehow that leaked out and Professor Kirstein and Latif, uh, they basically said, you need to do something about this. And I would say at the beginning, I wasn't really sure this was a good idea that I could pull it uh, together. But uh, then I got a, a name of Tim, Tim Chown, who was recommended to me as the person who could help me to lift this off the ground. And then thanks to Tim and many other people, I think guys are still, some of them are still on the core team. We basically formed the um, original nucleus of this uh, council and we went public in September 2014. Um, we also published a blog post about the last six years of IPv6 in the UK and you can see the link uh, when you get to the presentation or it's on our website. 
where we are today with IPv6, so this, this is uh, the Google view of our IPv6 adoption, and today we see about 22% of user traffic in the UK on IPv6, considering that uh, in September 2014, so less than four and a half years ago, we were at 0.19%. I think this is a great achievement. And I think the talks that we're gonna hear today are also gonna give more encouragement that there is more work happening here, and this number should just go up. Uh, global adoption, that's also very exciting to follow. Uh, and I'm super happy that uh, Google published this information. So this is their global view, where basically you can see that in uh, October, I think it was 13th October, the global IPv6 traffic reached 25%. So today we can safely say that one person in four globally is able to access the internet on IPv6. So this is no longer early adopters or we are now at point of early majority and moving, uh, moving up even though the uh, growth, tre growth trend has slowed down a little bit. What you can see also on the slide behind me is what I call the enterprise effect. That people at home have IPv6, but when they go to work, they don't have IPv6. So this is something that uh, enterprises uh, uh, need to work on. But I know there is a lot of work happening in the background and we'll probably see this changing in the future. Also, another thing that is changing on the global internet is that it's becoming more and more common to hear from service providers they are thinking about IPv4 as a service. They basically are moving their networks that provide services to users to IPv6 only. They still provide them some, um, in some shape and form IPv4, but this is something that's going to impact all enterprise services and how um, internet is accessed. And then finally to conclude, in case you are still in doubt why IPv6, uh, simply because IPv4 lots of, costs lots of money. So an interesting data that I follow because in my role as a network architect, I always have to justify why we are putting effort in IPv6. And uh, the price has gone up again. So a year ago, it was $14.50 per IPv4 address in slash 16. So we have gone up at least $3 and that's a public information. From private discussions, I know that the price is more around $20. Hopefully at the round table that we are planning for April next year, we will have uh, a representative from the IPv4 market group, if not there, then hopefully at the next annual meeting, and she can tell us uh, about the view of the market she's got as a market broker.